Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting, well, not sure about this one. Rare and exotic whiskey. Port Charlotte! Yay! Port Charlotte, PAC! 01 2011. Actually, it says here eight years, the calculated age since it was bottled on the 24th of February 2001 has to be nine years. But hey, we believe the distillery more than we believe the math that we can do. And it was um, finished in French red white, uh, French red wine. Yay. Palik, when I, if I pronounce it correctly. 56.1%. Over here in Germany, we're talking about mm, a little bit under 100 euros. So 97 is usually the price it goes for. And um, yeah, I've had the CC, I've had the MRC, I've had the OLC, and now I have the PAC. So um, Port Charlotte belongs to Brochladi. Brooklady has their normal brands, and then they have their peated brands, uh, which are the Port Charlotte and the Octomore. Unfortunately, Brooklady also has many, many different bottlings that are also peated, but are in the name Brooklady, which I do not like. <laughs> if you're going to have a peated whiskey, please tell me if it's peated or not. So they do that here. Heavily peated. Dumb little Jason understands that, and I think it's very, very good. Disclaimer time. I am not a peat head. Second disclaimer, I am not a Port Charlotte follower, <laughs> um, fanatic, uh, disciple, whatever you want to call them, right? So um, I'm starting to enjoy these and that's why I'm doing this video. This is part of my personal journey to become a whiskey connoisseur. I know a lot about bourbon. I know a lot about Irish. I know quite a lot about German whiskey. I know something about European whiskey. I'm starting to know a lot about um, Scotch single malt, and part of that trip is over to Isla. Hopefully in May of 2022, I will be on the island of Isla. I will visit all the distilleries. I will talk with a lot of people, and I will expand my knowledge a lot. But until I get there, I'm going to have to just deal with the fact that I'm going to drink some Isla whiskeys, do a lot of Isla blind tastings, and try to learn as much as I can before I get there. What am I going to compare this to? Because I still have it. It's going to be the Port Charlotte CC from 2007. This is 57.8. This is 56.1. Now, is this the best one to compare it to? No. The MRC would have been much better, but I do not have the MRC anymore. It's empty. I do not have the OLC. It's empty. But I did a bottle share with this and someone forgot to pick up their last 5 or 10 CLs. And therefore, I still have it. And I decided to use this as my comparison whiskey. Question of the day. We have the old Brochladi bottles that look like this. Maybe you've seen a few of those. Very similar, very, very standard bottlings. And we have the new bottlings that look like this. Yay! With actually the lettering in the bottles and so on. Green instead of transparent, instead of clear. Which bottles do you like more and why? So this is a little bit more of dumpy, it's a little bit shorter, this is a little bit taller, has to do with the fact that this can go all the way up to here and have some content in it so you can reduce the, the, um, the neck a little bit as well. I do like the Port Charlotte of new bottles, even though you can almost tell, whoops, my, almost tell the, um, the, f the, the, f uh, the level, the fill level here. Here you immediately see it, here you don't. Now this is cognac. This was a cognac cask finish. And this is a red wine from um, France. So let's try these. Um, third disclaimer. I am not a cast strength. I'm a barrel proof junkie, but I'm not a cast strength junkie. Anything above 50%, I often add water to it. So 56.1% might be too hot for me. There are friends of mine. They taste a 46% standard whiskey and they go, oh, a couple more percentage points would have been nice. And it's like, it's 46 already, guys. No, no, no. Anything above 50 is better. It's like, I'm not sure about that. I think alcohol sometimes masks um, some of the flavor misprints or mishaps rather than brings out more flavor after a certain point. Personal opinion. Your opinion can be different. All right. So on the nose, 
I do get a nice chocolatey barbecue moment. The barbecue, you have some type of like a pork chop. You have something, some type of pork on the grill. We do a lot of pork over here in Germany. Uh, pork shoulders, pork belly, pork anything. And when that pork fat drips down into the charcoal, and that moment, that, that smell, that's what I'm getting here. You do have, I have a little bit of pine, pine needle, pine, um, a tiny little bit here of a earthy moment, dark, rich earth. Very, very nice. I like this a lot. Over here, the CC. Now, the CC has been in the bottle like this for about eight months. Not optimal, I know. And so it has a little bit of air in here. And what that happened is, I think, is a little bit of that um, peat has oxidated, has a little bit evaporated, has gone towards a little bit more of a type of Play-Doh plastic type of rubber smoke moment. Not particularly great. To be honest, I like this. I think I would have liked the MRC better than the PAC, but... Hey, I don't have it here to compare it with. I like the MRC more I like it more than I like the OLC. So now this is not a bottle. Neither of these are bottles that a normal um, consumer is going to go into a liquor store and say, oh, I'm just looking through the racks here. A hundred dollar, a hundred or euro, a hundred pound bottle. Oh, look, there's a Port Charlotte. Going to buy it. No, you're going to buy the 10 year old Port Charlotte first. You're going to love it or maybe not. And if you do love it, you're going to look for something that's higher level. Bam, these limited editions. How limited? I don't know. Is there 20,000 bottles on the market or 2,000? I have no information whatsoever about that or I haven't found it any place online. If you have some information about what the um, how many bottles were actually produced of this, please do inform me. That would be great. One little last thing here that I can mention is this is 100% um, Scottish barley. Loch Lomond, um, Glen Scotia, uh, I think Springbank and as well as Port Charlotte and a few others use 100% um, Scottish barley. Many distilleries do not. If you go to Auchentoshan, there's not going to be a single word here about Scottish barley. It's going to be barley. And since they're um, um, maybe it be, might be from France, it might be from Germany, it might be from, I don't know, Canada. For all I care, the cheapest place where they can get the barley, that will be imported in there and used. And so there's a campaign... Um, not very loud campaign, but there's a campaign for, um, except, especially for the Isla region, to say, hey, we need to have not Isla barley, but we need to have Scottish barley at least. Now, Coila is probably going to go, no, <laughs> that's going to be way too expensive, but who knows. All right, my question of the day is not where should the barley come from. My question of the day is which bottle do you like more? So on the nose, I like the um, PSC more. Let's try the palette. 56.1%, um, 100 euros basically, cheers. This movement means heat. How much heat is there on the palate? There's a quite a little bit of um, heat going on. Yeah, I have more of an ashtray type of ash moment, which I'm not particularly fond of. I like to have more of a bonfire type of moment. Um, okay, it's just me. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the smoked ham moment either. As I mentioned, my first disclaimer, I'm not a peat head. Second disclaimer, I'm not the biggest fan of Port Charlotte. I do appreciate what they're doing, but I'm not going to go out there and um, in the evening go, oh, I don't know what to drink. Let's drink a Port Charlotte. Mm. If it's in tasting, I'm going to identify it as something that's well-made. And therefore, I'm going to actually appreciate that it's there, but it's not my flav favor profile per se. It's not my wheelhouse 100%. Adding a little bit of water to this actually helps it, in my opinion, a lot. Take it down to about 50%, 52%. Now I know why the Port Charlotte 10-year-old um, is 50%. Um, not just because Marco Ren René um, decided that many years ago, but also because it's sometimes actually the perfect... Um, alcohol strength for um, Port Charlotte, in my personal opinion. Mm. Much more of a chocolatey moment here. 
a little bit of toffee, a little bit of brown sugar in here, a little bit of ginger. Mm, very, very nice. The redness, um, the redness would be here. The fruitiness, that's this dried cranberries is what I have. One of the biggest things. Um, this is a good port chocolate. I'm going to give it a C plus. Now, I'm not the biggest fan here, to be honest, uh, for the especially for the value for money. I The Port Charlotte 10-year-old was on sale for under 50 euros at the moment. I would much rather have that. Um, the, for the wine note does add a special spice and a special moment to it, but it's still not my thing. 100 euros for um, an 8-year-old Port Charlotte. I think that's too expensive. I'm going to give it a D, D plus, actually D plus plus for the value for money. This is not something I'm going to go out and go buy again. And this is not something people would normally buy unless they are disciples of Port Charlotte, unless they are fans, unless they are, um, what else did I say there? Um, influenced by Port Charlotte and really, really love this brand. Other people love Octomore even more. It's like, hey, there's a four-year-old Octomore over there for 200 euros. It's a bargain. Um, okay, if you say so, but I don't believe you. <laughs> um, personal, personal opinion. I'm just not up to par on paying this amount of money for this this type of whiskey at this moment. All right, the CC, the, the Cognac Port Charlotte. Also here, fairly hot, and a little bit more of that ashy moment. The fruitiness is totally missing. The comparison is nice to really see what's missing here compared to here. That's a little bit more straightforward, and the cognac cask finish is not that evident as it is here. All right, thank you very much for watching. Question of the day, which bottle do you like better in wine? What is your favorite Port Charlotte? Maybe you can answer that as well. And thank you very much for sharing, liking, and telling others about this crazy guy over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Not every day you see someone having a Port Charlotte CC and the, um, tasting and comparing it, let alone the PAC. But um, I'm on my way to becoming someone who likes um, peat and um, smoke. It's going to happen. Give me time. Thank you. See you soon, Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.